What's up, y'all? So today we're gonna take it away from the table saws and we're gonna go back to the kitchen table with some cooking. So check this out. I got this uh, this Wagner. It's a uh, Wagner Sydney Zero 1058, whatever that means. And it's got this number eight on the handle, so that's pretty sweet. So, so I picked this guy up from auction. It is not what I would say gross. I would say it's grody with a capital G. This is grody, man. This is beyond gross, but that's all right. So I was like, you know what? This would be a prime example of how to restore your cast iron especially in conditions like this. So today we're just gonna use household white vinegar and the sink. So I'm just gonna submerge this guy, go right in, put the vinegar in there, 50-50 mix, hot water to vinegar, 50-50, right, with air bunnies. I'm just gonna eyeball it. It's not like an exact science or anything. I mean, I'm sure it is, but I'm not gonna get into that kind of nitty gritty. I'm just gonna go straight at it like this, leave it in there for about an hour, hour or two, check on it, you know, every 30 minutes, half hour, whatever you wanna do. It's the same thing, right? Six and a half dozen. I don't know if it's phrase, but you get it. Just make sure that it doesn't go beyond, you know, I don't want to start pitting it intentionally. I just want to get the rust off. And this is like beyond grandma, you know what I'm saying? Like, I got a lot of sh from the last video whenever I was like leveling up my cast iron. I'm not going to do air bunnies because I did level it up. And you know why? Because I made that thing smooth. And this thing, it looks like it's already ground. It's already smooth. It doesn't have those bumps like the other cast irons do. But anyway, long story short is whenever you buy like a brand new cast iron, right? They don't smooth them like they do back in the day. So if you want to check out the video of how I smooth my uh, store-bought cast iron, Check it out. I'd appreciate it. But anyways, enough talk. Let's go ahead and get this guy dunked. We're going to dunk it right now. Oh, bubbles. or make bubbles. Hey, don't be bubbling, dude. Why don't you? Make sure it's not bubbling. Hey, Mikey, go to the bathroom. Maybe we should have done it upside down. There we go. You see those, like, clicks? Like, where the light, like, this is my light bar. Where is it at? Right here. That's my light. But you can already see, this has only been in here for like five minutes. You can see the action taking effect. You can also see the crusties. We got crusties on the top of the water, on the surface. But you can see, like, you see these little clicks and stuff? That was just a water drop. But, like, over here, you see it's, like, freaky. It's working. All right. Acid. What's up? Acetic acid. Oh. Check it out. Bubblage. We got bubblage right there. We got some in the corners. All right, this is hour number one. The bubblage is kind of increased, it looks like, which is good. And it also looks red or it looks rustier, but we'll keep pressing on. We're still rocking and rolling. This is, um, it's been 24 hours. No, I'm just kidding. It is, uh, it looks severely red now. I fear that I'm inducing corrosion as opposed to helping it. So I'm going to pull this out shortly. You see the bubbles are popping, baby. The bubbles are popping. But it's looking a little bit better. I can see some bare metal around here, which is good. Uh, some around the edges. And there's a lot of pitting going on in this area, which is probably going to take some severe scrubbage with my scrubby. But we're going to get up in there. All right, it's been about a minute. And uh, as you can clearly see, we've got some crazy bubblage, which is good. And also increased redness once again. So like I said before, right, we're going to go, we're going to take you to the scrubby to get this guy rolling and what I want to do is oh my god look at that look at that right there baby it's nasty so speaking of nasty right we want to keep it in the water because it'll minimize like any kind of rustage that's going to be going airborne or any kind of other nasties or whatever stuff like that so let's go ahead and see I'm just going to show you the back side and then I won't bore you with the rest But even just giving it a little bit of scrubbage there. Like, look at that, baby. That's nice. Nope, you can't see it. Look at that, baby. That's nice. Sorry, I didn't mean to yell. I'm like right up next to the mic. But I'm going to give this a scrubby, scrub, scrub. And then uh, I'll show you the finished results whenever I'm done. I know you want to get a sneak peek of that inside. And we're still scrubbing, right? It's a work in progress, but look at that water, dude. It's like hot chocolate. 
which is also my nickname in high school, but that's beside the point. All right, I'm gonna keep scrubbing. Look at that right there. Remind you anything? My love. How did they go? All right, we're going for soak number two. The smell in here is indescribable, but it's very acidic and very bubbly. So let's see. Oh, we get out of the shadow here. There's a little bit of a uh, bare metal showing this time. It looks less red, especially around the handle, which is pretty nice. Ooh, you see the popping. It's on and popping. Oh, it looks like the eye of Sauron. That's actually pretty dope looking. Ooh, that's pretty red right there. Oh, you can see the, the reaction is happening. I, I should leave it to soak a little bit longer. It's only been in overnight. This was uh, more concentrated. I basically dumped this whole bing bong of booyah in here and then just topped it off with water. This is just like a little baby, uh, little baby container. Um, not really sure the, the wattage and the uh, volume, but I mean, I held one gallon of vinegar, so maybe it's a two gallon. And so doing that displacement with the pan itself into the vinegar solution, I only needed to add like maybe a, like another quarter gallon or something of water, but even that's not too bad. And it was hot too. I added hot water. So I'd have hot vinegar. Yes. I like my coffee hot and strong. Like I like my women hot and strong <laughs> with a spoon in them. In the booyah. There we go. Yeah. I might just leave this for a little second. Maybe do it tonight and then give it a, uh, Give it a bake in the sauna, AKA the oven. All right, so I decided to give it a little flipperoo. Uh, really some of the more troublesome spots, like you can see a lot of, this is just some dump in the inside. Whenever I was flipping it, a lot of the stuff wound up whoosh, coming out right there, which is nice. Still popping, right? You can still see some bubbles going on. Let's get the ISO run again. Not so, uh, not so exciting. Anyways, but this part right here is still a little bit troublesome on the back. So I wanted to hopefully just hit it from the top and then that way it'll start dissipating that so I can scrub that away but this part right here looks already so much better so much better all right we're going in for round number three round three fight it's like sudden death round you know what i'm saying except not really all right we're going in with the gloves this time we got a little more bubblage hopefully we can get this stuff off right here this is the part the sides look like they came out pretty well too there's still a little bit of gooiness here but we're getting down to the bare the bare metal this part in here oh yeah look at that that's nasty Was it? What's that look like? <laughs> How do you get two balls? That's weird. All right, anyways. All right, we're gonna be steady scrubbing, so it's all gravy. I gave up on the gloves because those nitrile ones just weren't cutting it with the, uh, or they did cut it. They cut, they literally cut with the, uh, the metal scrubby but it's all right because we're going with the scotch bright oh, this knob is very dodgy but i think we've got the results that we wanted i'm going to take it back up to the kitchen this is just my laundry deep sink but you can see right the metal is still flaky with the scrubby and i wanted to get it relatively clear like whenever you wash your rice you know what i mean you don't want it to be like cloudy uh but let's just go ahead and call it all right this is about as good as it's gonna get this is that spot that was super hectic oh but it feels really smooth now as well as over here this part was pretty bad but this is about as good as this is gonna get and 
it's pretty heavily pitted right here and down in this area here but you know what for for what it's worth like yes it is pitted but it's still i mean compared to the lodge or even just like the dime store ones that you get cast irons that you get from the store nowadays this is still going to be leaps and bounds better so i'm going to take this back to the kitchen and get some dawn and then just kind of scrub it up make sure that you know like i said like we want the water to run smooth and clear we don't want it to be cloudy and, and blackish or brackish even so not like the tv show because that tv show is hilarious all right we got it down to the bare metal that nice gun metal gray it's smooth and we want to get this guy preheated we want those pores to really open up you know like at the spa so that whenever we go to put your oil of choice i'm using just a neutral oil i'm not using like flax or uh, olive oil not at all uh but you want to go give it a nice coat you want to get all the nooks and crannies and then wipe it off like there's nothing on there and then you want to blast it as hot as your as hot as your oven can take and so i'm going to do this a couple times and just give you the results now this is after two coats uh, i went ahead and did a total of four my cat is licking herself in the corner because she's so excited but there you go so it looks a lot better it's got that nice you know dull uh that dull color that you really want to just kind of you know open up with the seasoning and then while i was doing some research about my wagner itself that 1058 looks like it's from the 50s but a lot of folks were saying like whenever they go to resell these on ebay or something that they check to see if there's any wobble and mine unfortunately does have like the slightest wobble to it but it doesn't spin so i guess that's a plus and then looking at it, that little pitted area right there to the right, that darkest area, it still looks kind of grody, but, you know, with a proper season, it shouldn't matter. And then to this area to the left right there, you see it's kind of spotty and, and has like a bronzy look. That's because I added too much oil uh, or I just didn't wipe it off thoroughly enough. And you'll get that um, as long as it's not sticky to the touch, you should be OK. And like I said, I'm going to give it two more seasons anyway, so that should cover up that defect. But it's smooth. I'm super pumped. And I'm glad that I stuck with this one even after three vinegar baths because it feels great. And uh, I actually can't wait to fire it up. So let's do that next. Yeah. All right. So I got some beef trimmings up in here. And I know a lot of folks would probably tell you you should probably use bacon or something super fatty. Well, I got beef fat, dude. I'm going to do some, uh, some skirt steak. So let's go ahead and get this guy rolling. And granted, that's a lot of fat. And that's what you want, right? You, want, you really want to start opening up those pores whenever you start cooking your actual food up in there. So... Eh, I'm having a little bit of trouble, but you know what? Even like, um, you know, like the first, uh, the first egg that you do on the flat top for the day, like whenever you're doing like breakfast service in the restaurant, eh, sometimes the egg sticks, but you know what? You get that first little bit of, uh, of heat up in there and everything should be cool. And let's go ahead and move on to the actual beef itself. And it's not sticking whatsoever. And I know some people would say like, well, no, it's not going to stick. You could stick an egg in there too. And it wouldn't stick because of all the fat, but that's kind of the point. It's your first cook. You really want to, you know, take any guesswork out of it so let's move on to day two day two we did uh whoa whoa let's try that again day two we did fish and this is a salmon it's a skin on salmon piece and i got a pretty good sear on there and as you can see i got a little bit overzealous with the amount of time that it was searing but on the skin side it is not sticking at all and for day two fish i am super super excited about that yeah some folks would be like yo fish there's no way but for a freshly uh freshly seasoned pan good to go Day three, we did pizza. Slides right out, pan pizza. Nice. Oh, mama, I have got to get me one of these. Ha! ha. So there you go, right? You catch one of these at the thrift store, auction, uh, garage sale, or your pappy's best friend is about to croak and is like, I can't do it anymore, Gerald. Take my cast iron, even if it looks bad. Yeah, yo, three vinegar bats later, four rounds of seasoning. If the fish fry wasn't testament enough, I don't know what's going to be, but check it out. I'm going to keep on... Uh, I'm going to keep on cooking, and I hope you do the same. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Grandma might have been cool about it. She might have been using it everyday seasoning, but you know what Grandma didn't have? That's some big-ass power tools. Maybe she did, but I'm... <laughs>